Do you know how we get water around here into the house? We just let that drain into there. I'm going to show you where the water comes from. But normally, as a rule, when it rains, and when it rains here, boy does it bloody well rain, off the guttering, we'll have like holes coming off the guttering, which will drain the water from the roof of the house straight into them barrels to fill them up. And you can use them, you can fill buckets of water up out of them barrels for whatever use you want to use it for. This tank here, there's a tank inside that concrete. So this will get filled up with water, which in turn will fill up the tank up there. And then that will get through that compressor, it will get pumped into the house. It's supposed to work automatically. Whenever you turn a tap on, like a kitchen tap, it, will, it should make the compressor work and pump more water into the house. It's not working properly at the minute, so it needs to get looked at. But it's quite low on water. We've not seen any water for quite a while. But where does the water come from when there is no water? This here is a bit dark down there. That's what's called a deep well. So all you basically do, you can actually put the bucket down there and it will put another bucket up full of water. I shan't bother doing that because I've only got one hand available to me. This has never run out of water, but there's a little pump connected to that deep well. So when water is scarce, you get the pump working, you've actually got to take this off and start putting water in there to prime it so it actually sucks the water up. And there's a pipe coming off that pump which travels around the back of the kitchen bit there. And that pipe will travel all the way round and there are connections in the pipe. So there's a connector here and you can disconnect them unions there. And at the moment you can use the water to actually uh, clean the pig pens and everything like that. But obviously when you need to get water to the house, you connect another pipe to the union and then the hose, <laughs> it's a long hose. It goes all the way across here to fill the barrels up or fill the tank up. So that's basically it. Oh. There we go, that's filling up nicely now. Generally speaking, it rains quite a bit and once it rains, it will fill them barrels up. Put it this way, one downpour of rain will probably fill three quarters of one of them barrels up and it can rain every day for quite a while and so water does become plentiful most of the time but there are times like this i mean we're 29th of january now 2024 it's hardly rained at all for the last 12 13 days so we've nearly used all the water up luckily we've got that deep well and the pump so we can pump some water fill them barrels up and fill this tank up which will obviously go in there so we can actually feed the house and take a shower and, and use water for washing up and toilet and everything like that. Without that deep well, we'd be in a little bit of trouble, <laughs> to say the least. Ironically, the very next morning, it's chucking it down with rain and it's going to be raining for the rest of the day. So what a better opportunity than to have a nice shower off the guttering of the house. I know that the water's cold and back in England you'd have your nice hot shower, but believe me, the water here, it's not cold cold like it's going to give you a friggin' heart attack. In fact, the temperature of that water is sweet. It's just right. 
just to get you revived. So hey ho, let's do it. I've got my head and shoulders. Ha. Do you know something? Back in England, I would have never have contemplated turning my hot shower to cold. I would have just kept it on hot. But over here, it just seems the right thing to do. It might have something to do with the fact that despite it's pissing down with rain, it's a good 28 degrees at the moment. It's nice. I thought I'd just show you the bathroom in this house although it doesn't actually have a bath in it, but you know what I mean. As I explained, there's like a pump outside with a water tower which supplies water into this house. There's a switch outside which you have to switch on in order for the pump to work, which is annoying. I'd prefer it if the switch was inside because when the switch is on, the pump should work automatically and pump water into the house as it's needed. Whenever the pressure of the water gets a bit low, it will pump more water into the house. It's not working properly at the minute, so I've got to get that seen to. If I can't fix it myself, we'll find the guy who installed it and we'll get him to put it right. But when the pump is working, you've got your power shower here, so to speak, and that will give you a lovely hot shower so that's good news. There is a cold water tap, which comes out the bottom of the wall, which is good. So that fills up that pan there. And believe it or not, lately I've been having showers by filling that pan up and using the little dipper to pour the water over. And as I say, the water coming out the tap is really nice temperature. It's not cold, cold to, to freeze your balls off. It's quite nice. And I'm quite enjoying having showers that particular way although obviously back in England I would have used a proper shower like this and not thought twice about it so this little shower unit is quite handy and by the way the glass door here this is pretty thick old glass it's toughened glass so uh, that was that cost a pretty penny when it was installed believe it or not we have round here obviously a unit where you can put all your bits and pieces you have your sink and your water dispenser for obviously drinking water, brushing your teeth and anything like that. What's missing from that wall is a decent sized mirror. So um, <laughs> when I get the chance, I shall get that mirror and I shall fit that against the wall. So at least you've got a decent mirror, which is handy. Uh, there's a few things missing from this bathroom, which you know how it is in our bathrooms. We like to have everything as, as we like it. Extractor fan, you just plug it in. It's not plugged in at the minute, but that will plug in up there into the socket. Them sockets do work, they are live. And as Ken told me, you have a light in here on the roof, but there's no light over by the sink area but there is a hole for it there so we've gone out and got an led lamp there which we shall fit in the roof so we've got a decent amount of light straight over the sink area which is where it should have been in the first place <laughs> you know the, <laughs> these little things that niggle me but it's things i'd like to get done in here it's not a great deal really it's just little bits and pieces just to make my life so much easier when you're having a shave or cutting your hair or whatever, shaving your head. <laughs> At least I can see what I'm doing. But yeah, like I say, when everything is working, it will fill the toilet up. When it's not switched on outside, if the pump is switched off outside, because the main switch is outside, you would have to fill the system up with a bucket of water. You have to take the lid off and use a bucket of water to fill that up unless you want to walk outside and fill it up or put the switch on which sometimes if it's chucking down the grain you don't want to do that so it's just little annoying things and there's a brand spanking new washing machine here it's never ever been used it's sat here for a number of years 
We need a hole in the wall, get a fresh water supply to plumb into the washing machine and get that working. So we can do all the washing here nice and conveniently. And also it'd be very nice to have another socket over here near the sink, maybe for a shaver or something like that, which would be handy. Anyway, I just thought I'd point out, this is the bathroom. It's actually quite nice when it's all cleaned up. These tiles are anti-slip tiles. They're very nice indeed. They're a kind of like a rough, rough, gritty, concrete-y tile. And also in the shower unit, them tiles are anti-slip. I know my bathroom back in England, the tiles are very smooth and you could slip over if you're not careful. But yeah, anyway, that's the bathroom. So it needs a little few adjustments doing to it. Also, <laughs> there's a, because there's, there's no second story on this house, there's a hole there, there's your access hole to get into the loft. So I don't really fancy going up there myself. I don't know what's living up there or what, what insects I might come across. <laughs> so if anyone has to go up there, it probably won't be me. We'll see. Anyway, shall we go out for a walk as it's such a lovely rainy day? Since I got here, which was January the 16th, we've hardly seen any rainfall whatsoever. And all the water had literally ran out of our drums and the tank which feeds the house. So we've had to use the deep well from Ken's parents' house to pump the water over to our house, which is a bit annoying to say the least. Now we've got two days of, well the rain has been kind of, it's light at the minute, but every now and again we'll get a little bit torrential. And when it gets really torrential, your boy do you know about it. When I came here in April of last year, it rained pretty much nearly every day, usually late afternoon or evening, which would be accompanied by thunder and lightning. But April time over here is the height of summer, whereas we're not quite in summer at the minute. I'm not too sure how the season, well there isn't really any seasons here, it's kind of one climb all year round so to speak, however certain months of the year generally have more rain than the other. Still, you know back in England where I used to live, or well <laughs> pretty much my entire life in England I've never really thought about water because wherever I've lived when I grew up in a council house and the house I actually have now back in England was a pretty newish house it was built in 2009 you don't really think about it we have mains water pumps into our houses over there. Obviously these days most of us have to be put on a water meter which is kind of annoying. I just think meters are a way of charging you more for your for your water especially for your electric. Uh, <coughs> but yeah over here it's a little bit of a different story. I'm kind of guessing in certain parts of the Philippines where you've got cities and built up areas there may well be mains water pumped into a lot of the properties I don't know I really don't know on that I've not researched it but where I am in Mindanao it's not a built up area this is a rural area and there certainly is no mains water pipes running underneath the ground. So in order for many of these people who live over here, and a lot of the people are literally living in tin sheds, getting their water supply can probably range from having no water, which means having to go and buy it in bottles, or having deep wells. 
Luckily over here there are a number of deep wells which I've been told have never ever run out of water, which is good news. It's just having the means to get a pump and pump it into your house or your, your shack or wherever you're living. The house we're living in, obviously once the, the pump and everything is working properly, it would be almost the same as living in a western style house. You wouldn't notice any difference. The water would just come into the house as normal, it would fill the toilet up, it would make the washing machine work, everything would be normal. But when it stops working and goes wrong, that's when there's problems. So it's quite important to have the water supply here and have a backup plan if it's not working. I thought I'd take a little walk up here to the highway. It's pretty empty. Not a lot going on. <laughs> Normally there's loads of motorbikes coming up here. I'm kind of guessing with the, the weather as it is, a lot of people are staying at home. <clears throat> so I'll tell you, it's, it's about 28 degrees out here and it's quite warm. I'm just walking around in a t-shirt. I could even take my t-shirt off and I'll be perfectly fine. Very comfortable temperature. I think all the plants, and I believe this is sugar cane here, definitely were needing this rain. Because I was beginning to think to myself, we've had nearly two weeks of probably one or two downpours of rain, which haven't really been enough. The plants have definitely <laughs> been gasping for, for a bit of water. And yeah, I was beginning to get a little bit concerned at the house even though we've got that deep well it's, it's bringing that pipe over and filling the tank up and god knows what but you know even with all this water I will point out here it's not the kind of water you want to drink I mean all this rain water you can catch it in barrels you can put it into tanks and you can feed it into your house you can shower in it no problem but I wouldn't drink it <laughs> certainly not no, we have them bottled water that we buy from the store is all I will drink. And even back in England, I would not drink water out of the tap. I just do not trust what comes out of the tap over there. And obviously over here, I'm not going to drink the rainwater either. So I will continue to buy the bottled water for anything that goes in my mouth and especially when it comes to cooking I will use the bottled water although I'm not buying the little bottles we're buying one great big bottle which fits on our water dispenser so at least I know I've got decent water to drink and to brush my teeth with and to cook with but it's a life out here like everything else it's a little bit of a shock to start with you're thinking about oh my god because in England everything just works well where I lived it did just work living in a house that was quite new everything gas electric water you name it things went wrong occasionally but you know there was always someone on hand to come out and fix things if it did go wrong it's a little bit more of a challenge out here trying to find people to do certain jobs but once you've been out here for a while and you get to know some of the locals they know who to point you in the direction of if you want to fix something well, I thought I wanted to just make this little video just to explain just to how basic it can be out here and water is like as basic as it gets so yeah it certainly is a challenge but hey ho I will get that pump fixed in the house so we can have the water working as it should be and it will make my life a lot easier it gets a bit tiresome filling the toilet, up, toilet up, system up every day with buckets of water I would rather it just fill up as it did in my house in England so that's on my to-do list 
so yeah happy days <laughs> that's all I can say if, you, if you're one of those people that like to lay down on the bed have the window open and listen to the rain to help you sleep you'll enjoy it over here So as the title says, water, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink. <laughs> I guess you could say it's all the fun and the fair. But if I can make my life a little bit easier, I will. And the first thing is, sort out the bloody water problem supply in the house. Anyway, thanks for watching. I just thought I'd bring this up, something to talk about. Thanks for watching everybody and I'll see you all in the next one. See ya.